Welcome back to Techspertise TV today everybody. So today we're going to be installing Kali Linux 2017.2 into VirtualBox. So the thing you want to do very first before you do anything else is uh, boot into your BIOS. I have a picture of the setting you need to enable. It's called Virtualization Technology. It might show up in a different name depending on your BIOS, but it will go along these lines just like that picture right there. And if you need help, I'll link a description or a link to another video, one to two, in the description below of exactly how you can do that. And then um, now you could uh, install uh, Kali Linux, so let's get into it. Alright, so I'm going to open up my virtual box. Make sure you already have that downloaded. You could get it downloaded by going over to VirtualBox. You type in virtual box. Go to their website to downloads. Make sure you download the Windows host if you have Windows, OS X, if you have Mac, and Linux for Linux. But also make sure you get the extension. So this is what uh, allows you to support USBs, like adapters if you're going to do pen testing and stuff like that. And just other uh, things with over USB that you need. So make sure you download that. Of course, I already have it downloaded. Make sure you then go over to uh, kylinux.org and you download the version that you want. There's also different versions like XFCE and so forth, different desktop uh, styles. I'm just gonna go with the uh, original. So I have 64-bit. You can choose 32-bit if you don't want 64-bit, if you don't have enough RAM that you're gonna give it. Um, or you can use the light if you don't want all the tools and if you don't want that big of a file. And you can see the sizes are right here and XFCE, LXD, and Mate, and E17. So you download those, wait for them to download. Then after that, you're gonna wanna go over to click new, and then you're gonna type in the name, Kali, uh, I'm gonna just put 2-2. This could be 2017, and it could be anything you want it to be. You choose uh, Linux, cause it's Linux. I leave it on Ubuntu 64 being that it is based off of Ubuntu so then you click next and then I like to give it about two to three gigs around I like to give it exactly so this is unnecessary but I like to do that type in 1024 times let's say three three gigabytes is going to tell you it's 372 so I'm going to type in 30 point That's about right. So next, and then I leave it on virtual hard uh, hard disk now. So go ahead. and I leave it on VDI. This is so that you could um, you can also transfer this into actually make it a bootable operating system on a real computer. So just go ahead and click next. I I like to leave it as fixed versus dynamic. Dynamic it will grow over time. You see the definition here. Fixed is the set uh, amount of gigabytes of storage that you give it. And it won't go over that and it won't necessarily use less than that. Your hard drive on your actual computer would be partitioned uh, just for that. So uh, 30 gigabytes or so would be partitioned just for that. Next, uh, I like to give it about 30. So then again, go up here, uh, clear. 1024 times 30 equals 372. So, Seven, two. This not necessary. It doesn't have to be uh, exact or anything like that. Create, and then you just wait for it to go, um, for it to install. It's gonna take some time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip forward to when it's done downloading. Okay, so now when it's done loading, what you want to do is make sure it's highlighted. Click settings. Go down to system. I usually click on processor and then I click on, I give it two cores out of my four. It's eight logical. Enable PAE. 
put on display I then click on uh, allow or enable 3d acceleration and then that would then give you um, more memory to allow your virtual machine to use then I'll go down to storage select this this right here where it says empty then click over here find the uh, uh, Kali Linux file so here it is I have all these other options so 2017.2 that is the latest as of this recording of this video open then I usually go down to network and you want to unclick at the advanced tab now when this is enabled right here it's going to be using your actual PC's computer's internet so let's say if you want to go to a public place or a cafe or a friend's house and then you want to connect to the Wi-Fi well with this option you're gonna this and also bridge you would have to uh, connect your actual personal computer first now you may not want to do that if you're trying to do a stealth uh, stealthy type of pen test or if you're not trying to uh, use your actual built-in wireless adapter so what I recommend you to do is um, use a USB adapter wireless adapter to connect but when you're first installing it I recommend leaving it checked and leaving it as NAT so that when you're first doing it let's say if you need to connect to a proxy or so forth you can do all that here so uh, leave that enabled um, and then you want to go down to USB let's say if you want to use a the adapter or any other USB click plus now keep in mind this is very very important uh, click plus here and select the adapter that you want to use this is the one I will use double click it click on yes not any not no click yes and then you're gonna click ok so for that that's done let that finish loading it's gonna take a second and keep in mind your mileage may vary with how long it takes for it to uh, make the file for Kali Linux and so forth and also you want to go to file preferences and you could do this uh, right away and then you go down to extensions and then <clears throat> you would click on plus if there's none here and find the file just navigate to where you downloaded it it's the same file as when you downloaded VirtualBox the extensions that I was telling you about to allow USB and so forth so you click on that click OK it's gonna install the the extension package and when it's done that will enable you to use USB adapters and so forth so now that we got that all situated you're gonna wanna either double click or click start there's different types of starts you could do but I'm just click regular start and let it load up now this is gonna be preparing for it to install on that partition that virtual hard drive of our computer so as you can see it's starting up it's gonna take a moment so what we're gonna do is a graphical install uh, I'm just click cancel here graphical install click down down arrow keys of course graphical install the only difference between these two this is more of a I wouldn't say a text but it's not really graphical in a way click on graphical it just makes it more easier now to full screen and you'll click control right control and C and that will do this to this option just give it a moment I think it's yeah there you go click X on these and there's your full screen you can choose whichever language you speak English of course uh, United States English it's detecting the keyboard allow it to load it might take some time longer on different computers I really do recommend using a computer with at least 8 gigabytes of RAM and a quad core processor and at least a terabyte hard drive depending on how many uh, virtual machines you install now you can get away with it sometimes on a 2 gigabyte I mean a 4 gigabyte computer but keep in mind it's going to run really slow depending on the speed of your processor this is your host name your host name is basically uh, when devices on the Wi-Fi sees your name let's say if you ever used thing before and you, you saw it say uh, Ginny's MacBook Pro 
or Sam's iPhone. Well, yeah, this is that name. You gonna want to erase Kali. That's too obvious if you're on a on a public network. Some networks may not allow you to connect with that host name, or they might have filtering. So you can put it as Bob PC. That's if you want. I continue. Domain name is if you're on a domain on a network. Uh, I'm not on the domain, so we're gonna click continue. Right here, you put in password, put it as whatever you want it to be. I'm gonna make it simple and I'm gonna put it as one, two, three, four, just for the sake of this video. One, two, three, four. All right, continue. All right, continue. All right, we're gonna use guided, guided. All right, this is a virtual uh, hard drive or partition that we made. It was 30, 30 gigabytes, but I guess it renders it as 33. Click continue. Now we're gonna, all files and these will be removed and stuff because it's gonna be installed on that. Continue. And then we're just gonna click allow it to be finished and click continue. And then it's just going to be asking you, uh, yes, just, just double check if you want on that partition. So we're going to click yes, click continue. Now it's installing the system. So now you can just wait until it's done. It's going to ask you if you're going to install Grub and stuff like that. It should. Uh, on a real computer, it will install Grub. That's what would be the question. However, virtual machine, it uh, simulates a real computer, so it actually does still ask you if you want to install Grub. And it's going to do that after this. Okay, so now it's asking you if you want to use a network mirror. So if you do, click yes. I will click no. So right now it's just configuring the package as it says. Now here's where it's actually if you want to install Grub, click yes. And then you uh, select the drive that we made, virtual hard drive. here it's telling you that it's complete now sometimes you might run into it saying it's it had run into a problem or it can't find the installation media if you have that problem where it says you have a installation media error what you could try to do is re-download the image possibly let's say if you torrented the, the file or if you just download over a bad connection it could be missing some bits so what you can do is just try re-downloading that now that is also a common problem on some hard drives of an actual computer. Let's say if you're trying to install it on a full computer, you can run into that depending on the actual hard drive that you use. Okay, so click continue. All right, so the default username is root. And the password is the one you typed in. I typed in one, two, three, four. By default, sometimes it's root backwards. So T-O-O-R. Somehow, if your password somehow did not work, try that. I'm typing in one, two, three, four. Enter. <clears throat> As you can see, it's logging in. Everything's working fine. I'm gonna show you guys how to actually connect your very first uh, USB and so forth.
right, so here's your, you know, Linux. Here's the browser, and I'm gonna show you guys that it is working. As you see here, this is the Ethernet uh, icon. Gonna go to YouTube.com. As you can see, everything here is working pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. So now you may notice that okay, it's Ethernet. Well, how do I connect to Wi Fi? And I do not want to connect my personal computer to it. So this is how you're gonna do it. So all right, close tabs. You're gonna right click. I mean, you're gonna click the right control key and C at the same time, and then you will see this happen. My second second. All right. Now you're gonna want to go over here to device and USB, and you're gonna select that that drive that we did earlier. So let's say if you notice if you uh, want to use a different one, okay. So what you want to do is go settings. You can do this while it's running. You don't have to do this uh, before you run it every single time. It's gonna load up, okay? And you're gonna go down here to uh, USB, and you're gonna click Add, select the drive. So I'm gonna take it out right now so you can see that it's this one. I'm using the Eddy Max. Uh, it's like a mini. Well, when you go here. You see that it's gone. I reinserted it. I'm about to do that right now. Wait for it to render a second. My second is quite a moment to come up. Well, in the meantime, I'm going to show you guys how to uh, actually enable you to be able to do that. So, as I said earlier, you click on NAT. Make sure it's, it says NAT. Go to Advanced and click Cable Connected. But what we're going to do is we're going to add another adapter if we can. Yeah, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna un undo it. Click OK. Settings. settings. Now we're gonna go back here. It took off the. Uh, it took off the uh, Ethernet, as you can see. So we're just gonna go back here real quick. Let me show you guys one more time because it's registering my uh, drive now. Okay, so we're gonna go down here to USB. Click plus. And this is how you'll you'll see it. So this is my adapter, wireless LAN, lo wireless local area network. So you can double click it again. It might say sign new. You could rename it whatever you like. Double click it and click yes. I'm not gonna click on it again because I already have it. I'm actually gonna delete that. And then you'll click OK. Go here, devices, select it. Wait a moment. You paid attention out here you notice stuff going on if it's reading the USB so now you click over here see it says Wi-Fi not connected now you're gonna select a network I'm blurring all of this out you select it and connect and everything will be fine and that's how you do it and then to get this screen back to normal right click control C and then it's gonna full screen you can always uh, you know shape however you want you could use this while using your regular desktop. Another thing I want to mention is when you install Kali Linux inside of VirtualBox or any other operating system for that matter, uh, you want to put before you install it, you want to put it in a folder inside your file system that you won't move. So inside your file explorer, put it in a folder that is going to sit there, name it VirtualBox and uh ISOs or something like that and don't move it don't rename them nothing like that because if you do then you can run into uh, errors where your actual virtual machine is missing um, and unless you put it back where it was it will not link it won't boot and you'll lose all your data all your saved work that you've done so you don't want to move it or anything like that all right guys so like subscribe and share thanks for watching